Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Are, are you an extremist? I mean, don't answer that question in the comments. Um, you know, they're watching us. They're always watching us. But <clears throat> I was thinking about this today. Um, I certainly don't consider myself an extremist. I feel that my views are are pretty standard of what America has been for a long, long time. And I would guess that most of you, if you really thought about it, that's exactly what you'd say. You'd say, you know, I'm, I'm not, my, my views aren't extreme. They, they, I, I, you know, in, I'm conservative, but they're certainly not extreme views. And traditionally, historically, we would both be correct in saying that. But based on today's standards, modern standards, the, the, the new normal standards, you and I are considered extremists. We're considered archaic. We're considered, you know, hate-filled, racist, homophobic, all of these kind of, you know, names that they're throwing at us. And <clears throat> I mean, some of us, and I'm speaking for myself at this. We almost look at it as a point of pride, you know. Well, if that's what you're going to call me, then, then by golly, that's what I am, right? But the reality is <clears throat> that I've, and I've said this for quite a while, this is a narrative that is being pushed and it's being played out be before our eyes. Um, a, a narrative to kind of paint folks like you, yourself, myself, as the bad guys, the evil ones, you know, we're, we're the ones that's stirring up all the trouble. We're the ones that's causing all the violence. We're the ones that's, you know, bigoted and hate filled and, and, you know, hold to our, our Bibles and our guns and all this kind of stuff. And it, it this has been going on for a while and this is nothing new. You can go back to the Clinton administration, Obama administration, you can go back further than that, further than that. And we can see this type of, of talk and narrative being built. But in today's world, it is a little different. Uh, it's very, very overt. Uh, the current president, <laughs> Joe Biden, has been very uh, overtly saying things about how it, we are a danger to democracy and to freedom, that we are a danger to this country. Um, and that is playing into a, a, a purposeful narrative that's being built. And I think a lot of times we, we forget because, like I said, it's not so much that we forget, but it's it's that we look at it as a point of pride, right? But we forget where this is leading. And that that's the point that I'm getting at. And this is leading into a, a, a really dark period. Uh, if you go throughout history... I'm not going to give you a history lesson right now. I have in the past, but I'm not going to give it to you right now. But if you look throughout history, any time this has been done to a another segment of society, regardless of if they were the good guys, the bad guys, just guys in general, it doesn't matter. Um, it's always ended up in a sort of genocide and sometimes a literal genocide where the people that have been for years, even generations, been, um, been, been pointed out as, as the evil ones, the ones that are, you know, uh, causing all the problems, that their views are, are you know, archaic, They're, they need to change, they need to, they need to update to these modern ways, they end up painting those people as ones that need to be removed from society. And we are watching this play out so much so more than than probably ever before. I believe that's part of the reason of, of flooding this nation with illegal immigrants. It's not just to change the vote. It's not just to disrupt the system. It, it's, I mean, it, it is those things, but it's not just those things. It's also to overturn the, the, the balance or to create an imbalance when it comes to traditional Americans, Bible-believing, patriotic, freedom-loving, family, you know, God, family, country, that kind of, you know, cliche thing. Um, it's, it's, to, it's to overturn that. 
so that the America is now flooded with people that hold no, um, no, no, no similar beliefs to us. You know, of course, they don't care about America and patriotism and, and this land that we're on and to be able to say that I am from this county and I live on this land and, and I live in this state and I'm proud that I live in this part of this state and this part of this county and all that kind of stuff. That, that's how it used to be. You know, many people have spoken of how in the old days, you know, you identified the state that you lived in. Actually, that's not really true. You identified by the region, the small local region, not just even the county. You would identify with the small local region that you're in. And 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 you were proud of that. And you were proud and, and took care of your family. And we had traditional values and, and this, this, this Western Christian uh, values that really turned the world into a modern civilization is is kind of backfiring on us. And this modern civilization has allowed the weakness and allowed this this modern neoliberalism and Marxism, neo-Marxism and and all this kind of stuff to to seep in because we've created such a such a healthy and free environment. And now we're going to be faced with being considered the minority, whether we are an actual minority or not. We are a minority of ideas and of thought and of, and of beliefs. And that's exactly how they want to paint us. So this week, the Democrat National Convention's going on, and I plan on not watching one bit of it. I mean, I might see some like little snippets and stuff on online, but I'm not going to sit and watch this garbage. It, I'm just not going to do it. And and I assure you, it's going to be garbage. It's going to be even more garbage than the Republican National Convention, which I felt it was a lot of garbage, too. I mean, there was certainly, I'm sure, some good people talking, saying good things. But the point is, is that America has, has moved so far away from what it once was. And so many of the American people, even people that aren't crazy liberal Marxists have moved so far away. I mean, if you look at statistics and, and polling and stuff, even the average American is okay with some level of gun control. The average American is okay with some level of abortion. And and the average Amer American is, is okay and supportive of some level of welfare systems and, and, and government oversight and regulations and all this kind of stuff. Things that um, not that many generations ago, you couldn't, you'd be hard to find any American that supported these ideas. And we're, we're watching things fall apart. We're watching the demise of what was once a pretty amazing place. Not the best, certainly. I'm not a fool. I know that America has a very dark, dark past. And, you know, we could also go into the whole story of, or the theory that maybe America was, was specifically created to be this, to be this darkness. I don't know. Um, but the point is, is this is where we're at. And so when we see all of the the rhetoric, we see all of the, the pushing for these radical, disgusting and really demonic ideas, know that it's being done for a purpose. It's being done to eradicate this nation of you of me because we are now extremists it's extreme to be married and to have children and to you know take care of yourself and and try not to need government it's it's extreme to um defend yourself it's extreme to to not want things in this nation and in our communities that uh really go against traditional moral biblical values. I mean, th th these things are extreme nowadays. And so um, as this narrative builds and as we see this play out, I, I, I do believe fully that at some point and most likely my lifetime and many of your lifetime, um, we're going to see a day where folks like us are openly prosecuted and openly persecuted and, and possibly even openly imprisoned and jailed because of our beliefs. We're seeing it already in the United Kingdom. People are going to prison now because they espouse some traditional belief. Um, I was reading some guy in, in the United Kingdom was sentenced to jail 
I don't remember the exact details, but <clears throat> he was uh, chanting some chant of, um, you know, saying that someone isn't British. You know, you're not British. You know, you're not from here. You're not from here. And of course, it was to someone that was a foreign, you know, a born Muslim. And he was sentenced because it offended and... Um, I can't remember the exact language, but basically it offended this person's uh, religion. And so they actually put him in prison for it. He's actually in jail. This kind of stuff's coming to America, folks. I know we can sit here and say, oh, but we have a constitution that protects us. Uh, you can go back many presidential administrations and find quotes, including ones from Kamala Harris now that's wanting to become president, that the constitution means nothing to these people. And they've shown that over and over again. So don't believe that that's going to be that protection. It, it was meant to be that, but I don't think it will be much of any more. The day will come when you and I will be in exile, that you and I will be, we will be outlaws because of how we believe and how we think, that we will probably even have to live in exile. And I often think about that from a prepper's point of view. You know, typically, the, t the typical uh, narrative is that a prepper knows how to bug out, knows how to survive, knows how to be self-sufficient because there could be this big collapse, you know, could be a nuclear war and the grid goes down and supply chains and it's chaotic. It may not be that way, folks. In fact, I feel personally that that's not really the way that it's going to go, that it's going to go more that the system still exists. It's that you and I are no longer allowed to be part of it. In fact, that's a, kind of what the Bible talks about, that we would have to live in exile, run away from the system, run away from government, hide out, do these types of things just to stay alive. I don't know exactly when that's all going to happen, but I think that's where we're headed. And so when you're working on your preparations, when you're building your community, when you're doing these things, understand that that the world is moving into a very dark place to where folks like you and I aren't welcome. And while it may take much longer for the United States to get there, I think that's exactly where we're headed to. And so that's a big motivation for me to, to get my life, my home, my family in order and to work on the people in the community around us to kind of build that barrier, so to speak, because the good people that live in the area have stood up and have strengthened themselves and strengthened the community so that when this time comes that I speak of, we'll be ready as a community to, to, to keep it out as much as possible. Because it's coming. I believe it is. And I, I'm not prophesying. I'm not telling the future. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just telling you that I fully believe that these days are, are coming that I speak of. We already are viewed as extremists. At one point in time in the future, we will be viewed as a danger to society. Uh, a danger to the point that we need to be eliminated. And so you need to be preparing for that. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.